good with Jesus. Yeah. If Jesus got to show up in the water to see to overtake me, I can swim with Jesus. Yeah. Praise him yeah. in advance. Yeah. Huh. Philippians 4 and 6 tell us to be careful for what? Nothing. Nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, we know how to pray. Yeah. Oh yes, we know how to pray. And we know how to tarry in the Holy Ghost. But do we know how to do so with thanksgiving? Because the scripture says, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Make your request be made known unto God. I share with y'all uh, this little simple, how you learn from everything if you use God's wisdom. <laughs> My children have a way that they ask me for stuff in a text, and they ask for what they want, and they say thank you. Wait now, you don't know how to do it. <laughs> Some, somebody will catch this. Mom, can you move X amount of dollars into my account? Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hello. 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 Yeah. But we go to God and say, Lord, if it be thy will. I'm down here. I'm struggling. I'm in need of a breakthrough. Lord, if you be so kind to stop by and see about your little girl. And then we wait. Lord, did you hear me? Because I had said yesterday, come by and see about it. Do you know what God is waiting for? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is waiting on a thank you. We said in Philippians, make your petition. Pray your prayer. But do so with thanksgiving. Lord, I'm sick in my body, but thank you for it. children don't consider us to be without. Come on. The same way. They don't consider us to be without. They don't know what we got to move to get it to them. Y'all ain't had to move nothing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They don't know what we have to wait on to get it to them. But they ain't worried about that. Why do we keep trying to get in God's way and, and get in God's business by telling him what to do for us. He said, just come to me and say thank you. Wisdom says, God can, God will. And while I wait, he gonna strengthen me to endure with patience and joy and with a glad heart until my change comes. Did you hear what I said? While I'm praising him, while I'm waiting on him to bring me through, he gonna strengthen me to endure with joy and a glad heart. I'm going to be strengthened while I wait. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you Lord Jesus. Yeah. Lord. You didn't yeah. know you can make top ramen be so good yeah. until you got tired of eating it with the little packet coming. Yeah. Yeah. My son said he's going to open up a restaurant yeah. called Camp Pronto's. Yeah. And his specialty is ramen noodles. Yeah. He can make them taste like anything. Because he's been experimenting. But my point is, if you don't step out of the box to make something great better, you're going to always be behind. This is God teaching you how to do it while you wait. I don't, want, I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat ramen noodles. But if I have to eat them, help me fix them up, God, so that I feel like I'm at <laughs> So I feel like I'm at uh, some, somewhere up, you know, fancy places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. So while he's making this petition, did y'all get my point number one? Yes. You gotta praise him in advance. That, that's why people look at, you know, I heard on the radio this morning, you may have heard it too, that when you a worshiper, nobody has to teach you to do it. That's right. mm. do, do you understand that? When we do what we are created to do, nobody has to teach us to do it. I, get a goldfish from the fair and see if you gotta teach him to swim. <laughs> Knock a live bird, a big bird out of a nest, and see if you gotta teach him to fly. 
They do what they do. So we as believers, we are created to worship. I, I can't explain it to people that don't know God. What, I, got some, I gotta get some help in here. We're the people that know what I'm talking about. That when people look at you like you're crazy because you're giving God praise in the middle of the rain, they don't understand why you're thanking God. It's because you're doing what you do. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I don't know how my hand just went up. I don't know why my mouth fell open and hallelujah came out. I, I don't know, except that's just what I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's move on to point number two. So, so Solomon prayed his prayer. Solomon prayed his prayer. And, and, and you saw in, in verse number 10 that the Lord was pleased with this thing. And watch, Solomon did not ask for money. He didn't ask for wisdom. He didn't ask, rather ask for fame. He didn't ask for honor. He didn't ask for anything except wisdom. He says, Lord, I've accepted the call, but now I need you to do it for me. And so God, because we, we talk about Solomon was the wealthiest man in the world, but Solomon wasn't wealthy when he prayed his prayer. Uh-huh. Solomon wasn't the richest man when he prayed his prayer. How do you know? Because over here in verse number 11, God says, let me go on to verse 13. I've given thee that which thou hast not asked. Not only am I going to give you wisdom, but in verse number 13, I will give you riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. <laughs> when I was a little girl and heard about Solomon, who was the wisest king and the wealthiest man, I did not understand back then that Solomon was only made wealthy because he asked for wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He was not wealthy first. Yeah. He asked for wisdom, and wisdom made him wealthy. Good <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But we still trying to figure out what the next get quick scheme is. Ask for wisdom. That's it. It's not the lotto. Come on. Yeah. Come on and preach. Isn't that your mom and daddy's inheritance? Teach. As soon as they die, we got mine. It ain't in that. It's in wisdom. So he said, I'm going to make you wealthy. Okay. So then Solomon woke up. Solomon woke up out of the dream because God said, Oh, this is a dream. I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to make you wealthy and I'm going to make you honorable. Solomon woke up. And Jesus Christ. As soon as Solomon woke up, you got to see it, it's right here in verse number 15. As soon as he woke up, two harlots showed up. Y'all don't understand. I just woke up out of, I was in the presence of the Lord. I was just in the glory of God. And here come some mess. I was just taken up into a high place. I was just taken up. I was wrapped up in the Lord. I was wrapped up in the glory. And God told me he was going to bless me. God told me he was going to keep me. God told me he was going to make me wealthy. And then I woke up to some mess. Well, let me tell you about the mess. The mess is what brings me to point number two. Let God be the judge of your situation. Amen. As long as we're looking at it as mess, we're going to miss the opportunity of the Lord to demonstrate what we asked for. <laughs> Let me say it again. As long as we look at a circumstance in one way, we might miss the opportunity for God to show us. He's simply setting us up to demonstrate what we asked for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm the king. And not just regular people in here need my help. Why does the Bible have to call them harlots? Well, why does it have to be mentioned that they were, y'all don't know what a harlot is. Prostitutes. Not, not just, you know, my fellow ministers of the gospel. <laughs> not the deacons, not the mothers, not the praise team. But your prostitutes wait on me when I wake up. If Solomon operated like church folks, these women would get kicked out 
Yeah. Before even knowing what their need was. Teach, yeah. teach, teach, teach. But do you know why Solomon acted quickly on his feet? Because it was just a, a few hours ago, Solomon said, give me wisdom. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so just a few hours ago, Solomon said, Lord, I need your wisdom. And here come two harvests. Lord, what am I going to do with this? What in the world is this right here? 